reflect on different roles where they are active in creation. And uh, in the hu humanity of Jesus, uh, the second person of the Trinity, who is qualitatively God, manifested himself in the flesh. Apparently, when, like, I use that argument, they say God. They believe God can't enter their into creation because he will become creation. That means he is creation if he enters it. Mm, no. No, any more than uh, would... Okay, so here, well, here, see, here's the problem. The Muslims affirm, or excuse me, the Quran affirms the Old Testament and the New Testament. Okay, um, there are instances where we see a clear manifestation of God in the Old Testament. It's called a theophany. All right. Now, they'll have to contradict that because then it will contradict their theology, saying, "How does God see?" So, so there's something so God so God can't manifest himself in some form so God couldn't speak so are the Muslims going to deny that God spoke to Moses through the burning bush did God manifest himself through the burning bush when God spoke to Adam and Eve that was a physical manifestation of himself through the elements physical elements in the world yeah, I told them that, and they said, no, we deny stuff like that. God could never manifest himself. Okay, like well, it, well, well, then what, what they're, what this, to, to describe to you technically what's going on with these Muslims, it's called being stuck on stupid. Okay. They're assuming. Welcome to the room, Phobos. What would you like to say? So yeah, you have to understand, you have to explain to them. There's no change to divine nature in the incarnation. There's merely the addition of a human nature see there's no there's no humanization of the divine nature no divinization of the human nature they have to understand what the hypostatic union is and you explain that doctrine to them jesus christ is one single person with two distinct natures without mixture i i think what they're asking is how can you philosophically explain god entering his creation without him being the creation itself because that's, well, that's i mean there's a change see that's exactly what I explained to you. They're assuming, you got to hear the underlying presupposition there. They're assuming there's a change to the divine nature where the creator becomes the creation. Now, there's the, the second divine person of the Trinity takes on a human nature without mixture. There's no mixture of the human nature and divine yeah. nature. Yeah, there's no transmutation no, here. Yeah, no change to the divine nature. That's, that's what their question assumes is taking place. Well, the divine nature... Now intermixed with the creation, now becomes part of creation. Like that's, they're not keeping the natures distinct from each other. You know what I mean? They're misunderstanding the incarnation. That's why I said you have to explain what the hypostatic union is, what that doctrine is explicitly. Yo, what's up, Darth? Yeah. What would you like to say, Phobos? Uh, first of all, how's you been? How, what's up? How's, how's your day been? How's my day been? Good so mm -hmm. far. Good. So far. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to read that. To um, I was just, for him or like, what? I was just wondering. Um, do you take it that there's like a a hierarchy of circular propositions? Because when your argument reduces down to epistemic circularity, why should we accept that circularity over an atheist or a deist or a Muslim or a Jew? Uh, you're going to need to qualify or be more clear as to your your question. Sure. So I'm saying, do you think there's a hierarchical structure of circular propositions, as in we should accept some forms of epistemic circularity what, for one view? What, yeah, what circularity do you have in mind that we as in Christians um, are adopting? That you rely on the revelation of God, but for God to reveal himself, he first has to exist. And I've heard you in previous conversations admit that this is epistemically right. circular. Um, no, no, when we, when we say how do we how do we know the bible is god's revelation we say well it is through god's revelatory actions that we know this both externally and in, internally now if somebody wants to say that's circular so be it well, that, that's a misinterpretation of what i said i meant like not how okay. do we know not how do we know the bible is god's revelation it's how do we know the christian god exists and then you would appeal to revelation which presupposes mm -hmm. existence 
which is epistemic uh, circularity. But you already admit to this, right? I presuppose his existence. Well, whenever yeah. once we reach a certain level of neurological development, whenever we are conceptualizing facts and invoking facts, we will we will either in our minds explicitly or more commonly implicitly be referencing God or referencing not God. So when you say reference, somebody is, let me, may I finish please? Yeah, Jen? you can finish. Sorry. What we're talking, what we're talking about is, um, is that we will conceptualize any given state of affairs when we think about it as at, at any stopping point in our thinking process, we will conceptualize it either as creaturely or not creaturely. So if if somebody is saying, well, well, that's circular, well, this is like somebody pulling a hand grenade like the Joker did in the Dark Knight uh, and and pulling the pin and about ready to release the, release the handle. Your, is this your when he had um, will... Bruce Wayne's wife captive or like his girlfriend? Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm like talking the about oil? When, he met, when, he, when he met the gangsters. Oh, in his mouth. Oh, I see. The yeah. dark night. Okay? Yeah, yeah. This is an objection which annihilates themselves. Yeah, but the okay. thing is... Um, so let me let me explain to you. Let me explain to go you. Go ahead, sir. Okay, in a Vantillian approach, Vantill says the starting point, the method, and the conclusion are all involved with one another, okay? So our, our proximate starting point can be our own self-consciousness and our immediate sense perception. Then we have meth methods of reasoning, okay, both innate, uh, discursive, um, um, and then we conclude uh, that God God is the creator. Yeah. But all these things, each of those three separate things depend upon each other, without which none of them could be intelligible. Yeah, they're, they're codependent now, you, uh, propositions. You, right. So yep. these are a necessary ingredient for human reason and intelligibility. Now, mm -hmm. the unbeliever who, who wants to come along and wants to classify that, oh, that, that's circular. Right. Well, first of all, we're not talking about an or just simply an ordinary state of affairs, but be that as it may. When they object to that, they're doing the very same thing in the form of its negation. Do you realize that? Hello? Is it, hello? Yeah, 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 I'm still here. Dark, dark. Can you just give me two minutes? Someone just knocked on my door. I'm, I'm just going to so, answer and come back. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, for everybody in, listening, in, the I'll starting be... point, they're, they're, starting, they're starting with their own self-consciousness, and they're starting with their 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 own self-consciousness, and they're going to deem it's not creaturely. And then they're going to employ their reasoning based upon their non-creatureliness, and then they conclude not God. Oh, okay. It was uh, just an Amazon package. <clears throat> So it sounds to me like, and, and you're, you're conceding this, it's not like a bad thing, right? It's like Vantillian no, apologetics Van, holds that epistemic circularity isn't a negative. Van, no, he, no, he doesn't. Listen to me. Have you read any of Vantill? Um, I couldn't quite remember the name of the book, but I've read one of his books. Okay, well, it I was like a list. Position. Okay. Vantill refers to this as spiral reasoning. OK, now, when we start with our immediate self-consciousness, OK, we're we're going to have to either acknowledge that it, when we just when we just think, oh, I'm, I am self-conscious. OK, now it's going to be categorized in our mind in any given moment that our self-consciousness is creaturely or not creaturely. The creator creation distinction. Yeah, the creator creature distinction. Okay. Right. And right. So then when you reason out from there. And so, first and foremost, what you have to understand is the Bible makes it very clear everybody starts at, at a certain point in neurological development with God consciousness. They can't escape it. God has made them to know that God exists. So, this, this is the starting point of why. We, we we start, okay, I have my self-consciousness, my sense perception, and it's creaturely, right? And then I'm reasoning from that creaturely proximate starting point and then concluding that 
it there has to be a god because otherwise my self-consciousness wouldn't mean anything it sounds like you're just um, ascribing a different label to epistemic circularity, which you've accepted that your argument um, is epistemically circular in the past. What I'm saying, what I am, what I'm saying is, there cannot be any neutral conceptual frame of reference with our proximate starting. Yeah, the law of excluded middle. No. Yeah, yeah. facts either do reference yeah, God yeah, or yeah, they don't. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. I was thinking, I don't know why I must be tired. I thought you were referring to the law of non-contradiction. Okay. Yeah, you are correct. So, so the point, the point is, um, the unbelievers, especially the, the sophists who are agnostics and, and atheists, it's not because there's a problem with, with our rationality or our philosophical defense. It's, they want to try to find some mental gymnastics to accuse that of because they're bitter clingers to their autonomy of reasoning. And how do I know that? Because the very charge that they laid, they commit themselves. So they're not consistent. There you go. There you go. So, so you're saying that the charge that they're laying upon the Christian position, which is epistemic circularity, it, applies to their position as well. Well, is, you, you, how do you, how do you, how, how do you have a neutral conceptualization of your of your self consciousness? You can't. You either yeah, you exactly either have to, exactly you have yeah. either you either from the get go have to adopt uh, that you're you cut out. Yeah, I had an alarm go off. Um, you have to adopt that your self consciousness is creaturely, or you or you, or you will choose to not do that. All right, but so, you see, the, in the Christian worldview, yeah. it, it's not like we have a choice, because at a certain point in neurological development, okay, yeah. we, we God makes us to think this way, but yeah, the individual can then choose to suppress that which God has made them know and say, yeah. no, I don't accept that my self-consciousness, my sense perception. Yeah, they're presented with the revelation. They can choose to accept it or reject it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to, to just not retract, I mean, I appreciated all that. Um, I appreciated all you just said. It gave me some insight, but my original question was, and it sounds like you've admitted to it now. So the unbeliever and the believer both suffer from epistemic circularity. But my question is, why should we take your epistemic circularity Wait. as a hierarchical um, positive as opposed to the unbeliever, as opposed to the deist or the Muslim. Why? Why? It's, be, it's because, um, well, well, first of all, uh -huh. the, Muslim, the Muslim is not starting off from a, a not-God world. It's just that they have an idolatrous conception of the God world. I didn't mean the not-God world. world. I meant any belief system that's not Christianity. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the concrete universal uh -huh. that they're holding to doesn't have the attribute set in order to ground and secure human reason, truth, and intelligibility. Wait, concrete universal, by that you mean Hegelian idealism? Is that the type? No, I'm, 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 use, I'm using idealistic terminology, but I'm using it in a way to express a, a, a biblical truth, that God is the eternal, yeah. self-contained, supreme being, creator, and the source of all possibility that is not himself. Okay, okay then. <clears throat> so... Regardless of the attributes, because we can attack the Muslim God, and I'm not here to defend the Muslim God, but we have all these other belief systems that suffer from the same type of circularity that Christianity does. No, no so the, issue, asking, the issue is the issue, it a hierarchy? The, 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 issue, okay, the, issue, the issue is the content of everything they say collapses into absurdity upon examination. That's besides the point, though. Because if we've taken fallaciousness to be flawed reasoning, then the same applies to Christianity. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is... They don't have a metaphysical, ontological basis to, to invoke these propositional truths. Well, regardless of the metaphysics and the ontology within the worldview, we start, first have to establish the actuality of the worldview. And if we're going through doing that no, through the, epistemic circularity, the there Christian has to be a hierarchy. Is, the Christian position is no, no, we don't have that. to establish the existence of God. God has already done that. We are just simply recapitulating yeah, that God has made us to know the unbeliever yeah. is somebody who is yeah. acquainted with God's existence, 
uh-huh. but who decides that they do, do not want to retain yeah. it. And then through a, pro- a process of suppression yeah. of truth and a righteousness, psychological self-deception uh-huh. and confirmation bias yeah. as to why it, it's not plainly evident yeah. that, that God has revealed himself. Uh-huh. Yeah. So when you make the assertion that the, the believer in Christianity, of course, is not making a case for why there is God, they're just accepting God's revelation. That claim itself hinges on epistemic circularity, which brings it back to the question, why should we yeah. accept your circularity over the circularity of a deist, a Muslim, a Jew, a, an atheist, be, be, because that, an agnostic? That, that be, be, why? Because yeah. there's, there's, there, there's why? nothing coherent about any of the parts of the bits of the pieces. There's nothing. There's no connectivity. There's no That's correlatedness. That's a category error. Everything. No, it's not a category error. I'll explain okay? why it is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> give me give me a proposition. Give me one proposition. Before that I do that, can uttered. I explain the category error? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so when I'm asking you why should we accept your circularity over the circularity of another belief system, you're going to attack the metaphysics and the ontology of that belief system as opposed to the reasoning for the actuality of the belief system. Yeah, I'm saying so re- you should accept it because God has already made you to know it. You're simply denying yeah, it. That's after, circular. After, no, 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 not, not, no, not, a, it, yes. it, it's not, no, it's... <laughs> There, there, it's a different kind of circularity, okay? Yeah, it's the epistemic. Bible, the Bible teaches, listen to me. I am. How commonly do atheists say that, you know, theists are shifting the burden of proof? Actually, we're not. I okay? don't think that's a valid we're, claim. Okay. Now, I think that's the fact of the matter claim. is, is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it circular simply to say God has made us to know that, that he exists? Yes. Well, well here's, here's the problem. You it's want me to show trans- you why it's, it's circular? No, no, let me tell you why. It's a transcendental. No. It's a transcendental necessity. Exactly, exactly. So epistemic circularity is a necessity when talking no. about worldviews. No, no. Do you know what a transcendental necessity is? Yes. A transcendental necessity. I can explain what it is. is. Not, is not simply. By the way, what are you? Me. Um... I'm a deist, but I don't really care about debating my own personal views because okay, I think well, it's here's unintuitive. Okay, well, here's the problem. Then you're then you're not a, then you then you're really not in a position. But why are you attacking that, my view now? Because you you are invoking certain things of what is and can be and cannot be, right? But it's an internal critique. It's a, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does because you believe you're that I can reason. You're not understanding. In order to critique anything, I am. Okay. In order to critique anything, you're going to have to have a worldview that provides for that. Not necessarily. You want me to tell you why? You're not, because you're if not, I'm talking okay. with wow. you. Wow. Wow. I'll tell you why. I think you can get it. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. You are truly clueless. Let me I'll explain something to you. Let me explain. Oh, no, Let no. Let me explain I something to you. stop right there. No, you got to stop right there. Listen. Okay, stop lecturing. You just, you just made a major faux pas here. I'll okay? tell you why. Okay. Would you stop, please? Okay, let me explain myself. Listen to me. In order to crit- in order to critique anything, okay. What's your yeah. reference point? What's your reference point? My reference point is going to be the ontology of my worldview, but that's irrelevant okay. to the question. What I is asked, what is answered. what is your what is your concrete universal within your worldview? Wait, why are you asking me questions? You haven't answered mine. All right, li- listen. We're not going to play this little game. We're I not. I have been sitting here. I have been sitting here. For quite some time, answering all your questions. No, you've been giving me a community college lecture. Okay. That's an unrelated oh, radical. Okay. okay, all right. Now we got. Okay, now we revealed him. Okay, goodbye. No, he good. just no. revealed that he's a he's a he's a he's a troll. Okay. He's sort of pulling out now, ten of the around. <clears throat> what, whether anyone agrees with me or not, I was being painstakingly patient with him and methodically answering him. For him to resort to saying I'm giving a community college lecture, what he's attempting to do is take one of my cliches, if you will, one of my catchphrases that I use to impugn the poor reasoning and scripted responses of unbelievers and then turn that back on me, okay, which I was not doing that. Now, how can you critique anything? If there isn't a worldview to to critique from, okay, what is his final reference point as to what anything is, can be, or cannot be? 
He's a deist. So for him, there is nothing that is identifiable and defensible that can be instantiated as his concrete universal or final reference point as to why anything is what he is. Because remember, he's a deist. Deists simply invoke God, not by virtue that God has disclosed his existence. They're just invoking God. Oh, there's a God. They can't appeal to anything in creation that necessarily indicates God, because in order to do that, God would have to have purpose that in creation. But since his God doesn't give revelation, he's not in a position to state that. So does anybody agree or disagree with me that once he tried that maneuver, I'm giving a community college lecture that he was just trolling? You see, even when you bend over backwards to patiently and methodically uh, try to answer them, they still want to troll. How can you evaluate anything when there's no final reference point? Okay. The reason why we can do an internal critique of other systems is because the Christian worldview is the only worldview that has the attributes and property set that reside within the triune God that enable us to deploy reasoning and thought and evaluate uh, certain propositions. Okay. I missed a couple of minutes ago. What I missed, did he... Uh... No, he started out like he was a sincere questioner, all right? And I methodically was answering him for, for quite a while. And then he revealed that he was only, he was only trolling, okay? Uh... Because when I was trying to say to him that being a deist, uh, he admitted that he was a deist. So I was po trying to point out that he says he's doing an internal critique of the Christian worldview. But in order to do an internal critique, there has to be a worldview that provides for critiquing. Okay. How in a world where the God of the Bible does not exist, how are you able to critique anything? Right? Exactly. That's kind of like what we were talking and, and, about earlier. Yeah, I, I gave him a knockout punch. And rather than realize that he was TKO on the canvas, he decided to go into a troll mode and say that my methodical answers to him, whether he agreed with it or not, was a community college lecture, which it wasn't. So he he was he was actually he was actually trolling the whole time, but he was pretending not to troll until he could drop that zinger. Okay. Mm. And can you elaborate the the beginning part where he said that there's ep epistemical circularity? Well, in a, in, 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 in a sense, we, at any given moment, we're operating, uh, w w even when we start from our, our, our proximate starting point, such as our self-consciousness and sense perception, we are still implicitly, inherently operating from a first principle, which will be God, okay? The difference between us and the unbeliever is that the unbeliever has decided to abandon that which God has to make them know. I don't care whether they say they, they don't believe that, okay? I'm going to remain faithful to the biblical testimony whether they object to it or not, okay? Now, the, 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 point, the point is this, okay? If he's going to say that's circular, well, then... Why is he objecting to it? Because he's doing the very thing that he's claiming. There are different kinds of circularity. Okay. Now, I don't know if you heard me. I talked about that. Um, there, there's also involves a transcendental reasoning. What are the necessary pre? -con what is the necessary precondition or preconditions in order for X to be the case? And without which you couldn't invoke x okay 
right? And sure. if, if that, if we're, we're talking about the ultimate precondition, not just a precondition, the ultimate precondition. So if it's the ultimate precondition, unless the individual themselves are the ultimate precondition, like God, then you're going to have to start with God's revelation of himself, okay? And if you don't, they're either going to have to admit, if they're honest, well, they're not going to admit that God has revealed himself, okay, in, in a way that is undeniable and, and irrefutable. They're going to say, oh, no, 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 God, God, has, God hasn't done that. But when they, when they do this, they are committing the very circularity that they are accusing us of, and, but they don't care. Okay. Sure. It's not, it's not, it's not a mere circularity. Van Til says the starting point, the method, and the conclusion all depend upon each other. And without which, None of those three parts could be coherent. Welcome to the room, Harold. It is so good to hear and see you guys. Bless you all. Hey, I actually, I um, not to disrupt the uh, dialogue that's going forth right now, but when you guys do um, finish up, I wanted to know um, if someone. If someone asked you to prove the resurrection of Christ, what would your personal answer be? Could you say that again? If someone asked you to prove the resurrection of Jesus Christ, like how would you how would you uh, oh, it's, it's very, answer it's, that? It's very, it's, it's very simple. Um, God has providentially secured um, a witness to to Jesus' resurrection that cannot be denied that that any attempted denial will result in catastrophic absurdity in other words the resurrection of jesus christ cannot be disassociated from the christian worldview if you attempt to deny the resurrection of jesus christ you're going to um have to be doing so from a different worldview but no such worldview can be grounded okay so, I mean, so we can appeal to the facts of history, people who give an eyewitness testimony uh, as, as a part of that defense, right? But we never appeal to evidences, including eyewitness testimony, in a way that's going to um, capitulate to unbelievers' false beliefs. So, can you still hear me? Hello? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So we just simply point to, we simply repeat what, what God has stated, right? That God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And we know this by uh, eyewitnesses who God providentially secured to be an infallible witness of his resurrection. It's disputed. I think, uh, I think Darth um, out. whatever on, on, the, on the historical grounds that are presented is to hold, but then that person will be operating from a non-Christian worldview, and then there won't be grounds for talk about any history or evidence for anything, because unless it's the case that the Christian God exists, there's not going to be a metaphysical grounding to talk about anything you won't be able to talk about the causal principle you won't be able to talk about identity over time you won't be able to talk about the regularity of nature right so we 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 we, we should not isolate the defense of the, the resurrection of jesus christ from 
its inseparable nature to the Christian worldview as a whole. Okay? It's, it's, by the way, can you still 